G'day guys, it's Tim Guest here, Australia's leading financial educator and managing director and founder of Infinite Wealth. Uh, happy Friday everyone, I hope everyone's had a fantastic week and you're looking forward to the weekend ahead. Uh, firstly, you know, if this is the first time you've joined us, thanks a lot for joining us. Of course, hello to all our long-time followers, the 40 odd thousand of them that we have nowadays across all our different social channels. It's, uh, it's great to have you guys as always. Rihanna, welcome to the pod, uh, or the uh, the Facebook Live. Andrew, welcome along as well. Uh, guys, look, uh, today I want to talk to you about the single biggest mistake that I see people make. Uh, but before we get into that, just a couple of things I want to ask. Guys, I would love to see your interaction with this video, so please, uh, you know, comment, question. Hey, John, how are you, mate? Great to see you, mate. Hope things are going well for you over there in the US. Um, uh, yeah, I'd love to get your interaction. Love to see you like, love, angry, I don't know, whatever it is. Uh, and of course, the only thing that, uh, that I ever ask in, uh, in return is when we're doing these videos, if you're getting value out of watching the videos, please, just as a bit of reciprocation, just to keep me going, sharing my info with you guys. Uh, I just really want to see you guys share it with your friend, friends and family so they can get the benefit out of it. And of course, so we can get a wider audience, okay? Um, but today I want to talk to you about, like I said, the single biggest mistake that I see people make when it comes to investing in property. And really, I guess the key that it comes down to, and I know a lot of, a lot of people know the story about, you know, within five years I was able to buy 13 properties. But really the key to building my wealth wasn't the five that I was able to, uh, or the 13 that I was able to buy in five. What it's been is the 10 that I've been able to hold on to for 15 years, okay? People are always focusing on the short term. So let's talk a little bit more about this, right? G'day Dean, how are you, mate? So people, the biggest mistake that I see investors make is there's three factors that are always gonna come into play when it comes to any investment, okay? And primarily, investors only ever think about two of them. So the first one is this, capital growth. So they're looking to buy a property or an investment that's gonna appreciate capitally, you know, it's gonna grow in value over time, okay? So a lot of time people are looking at buying investment that's gonna grow and grow as much as possible in the shortest amount of time. I mean, that makes sense, right? Or the other thing that we see people look at, and this is kind of more your Robert Kiyosaki style of investing, is they think about the cash flow, okay? So they think about buying an investment that's gonna put money in their pocket. And that is typically the two things I only ever see investors really focusing on or doing their numbers on. It's either what's gonna get me the capital growth, understanding that they're gonna give up the cash flow, or what's gonna give me the cash flow, understanding that they're gonna give up the capital growth. The one thing that people never ever seem to take into consideration is risk, okay? You can never get all three, okay? It's a bit like, uh, you know, it's a very similar analogy I remember people talking about when it comes to buying a product. There's quality, there's service, and there's price. You'll never get all three, you can only have, have at best two. That's kind of a little bit the same when it comes to investing, right? You can either have a property that's gonna get you maybe good capital growth, maybe, you know, not so much risk, but it's gonna hurt you from a cash flow perspective, okay? Or you can buy something that's not gonna grow capitally, okay, and not much risk, but it's gonna give you good cash flow. Okay, but really the balance and buying in a, the best investment, and actually, in, and let me give you some real life examples so you can play this out, right? So, probably the single most common investment strategy that I see with property investment is people wanting to go and buy an old house on a big block in an area that's set to jump, right? And what they're hoping for is that the, the value add or the ability to subdivide that property now or to potentially subdivide that property in the future is, is what they're after. They're after that capital growth. Now, I'm not saying that that property is not gonna get you good capital growth. In fact, these were the kinds of properties that I started buying when I first got into my property investment. However, the key was this. They were killing me from a cash flow perspective. It was costing me two, three, sometimes $400 a week to hold these properties. And of course, it then prevented me from expanding my portfolio. Now, some really key stats here in Australia when it comes to property investment. G'day Chris, how are you mate? Hope things are going well. Um, uh, some key stats when it comes to property investment here in Australia. 75% of investors only ever own one. I mean, what a shocking statistic. Okay, I thought property investment was this really great investment strategy. How come 75% of property investors only ever own one? And I gotta tell you, that's probably the number one key. They go and buy something that they're hoping to get good capital growth out, but it's costing them a fortune out of their back pocket every single week, and, uh, and they're unable to expand their portfolio. Okay, primarily with that kind of investment, not a huge amount of risk, it's just gonna hurt you from a cash flow, but of course, most people's idea is, I'm gonna be a developer, I'm gonna subdivide it, Thanks, man. I'm gonna subdivide it and, uh, and, and that's where you're gonna come across all sorts of huge amounts of risk. The amount of capital that's required, the time blowouts, 
the, the, the cost blowouts. And not only that, developers always make good money when you're in the strong parts of the market, but as soon as the market turns, and we've seen a lot of people that have been caught out with this, uh, particularly over the last couple of years, maybe in Perth, it's gonna happen in Melbourne over the next year or so, as the market turns into its downturn part of the cycle, and if you don't know about cycles, man, you have got to become a client and let us teach you exactly how the economic cycles work so you know what's coming. Okay, but the, the, the biggest risk in development is having all that capital in an investment when the market turns, then you get caught out. That's called speculating, not investing. That is no different to going to the casino and putting your money on red or putting your money on black. By the way, you know, just another thing, and I'm not gonna get stuck into it in the video today, you know, just, just keep this in mind when it comes to also share investing as well, right? The way that we kind of think about investing in shares is that we're gonna be buying into a fund that's got some awesome hedge fund manager that knows everything or is better than some other hedge fund manager, and what they're out to do is they wanna buy it while it's low and sell it while it's high. One of the big things that the financial markets do not want us to know is that there has been over 30 years worth of evidence. There's been two Nobel Prize winning economists who have won prizes for their work on the fact that you can never beat the market. Okay, you can only ever beat the market in the short term, but over the long term, you will never ever beat the market. And all you're doing is involving yourself in high risk investments. And of course, the financial markets want you in there because every single time they buy and sell and sell and buy and buy and sell, they get paid a brokerage fee. So that's how they make money. And that is not how investors make their passive investment investing is the way to do it. Let me extend this on, not only just beyond, you know, talking about the kind of investment that you wanna buy, because that's just one part of being a property investor. But this is the other big mistake that I see a lot of investors make, and what it comes down to is how they structure the finance. So most investors will typically stay with one, or maybe even two lending institutions. And what happens is their properties get cross-collateralized, or even if it's not cross-collateralized, the banks have their all monies clause, the banks have got all the security, and if you get trouble, you're gonna get caught out and they're completely in charge. One of the most important things that we teach our clients to do is how to put finance firewalls in place for every single property that they're buying so that they stay in charge, so the banks don't have something over them. You've got the security, not the bank. Once again, all investors are thinking about is their capital growth and their cash flow and they're forgetting the risk and that's the thing that kills them all the day, all the time. The other thing that I wanna to talk to you about, and this is just something that, and the reason why I'm doing this, this video today, right, is because of something that happened this week with one of our particular clients, right? So this is another big mistake that I see that people make when it comes to property investing. They think property investing is a one-dimensional kind of investment. What do I mean by that, okay? So they do their research, they think they're getting into a good area, they sit down, they run their numbers, they go, man, all right, yeah, we can afford this investment, but they fail to build in the safety nets and buffers that they're gonna need. What about when interest rates go up? Guys, do you know the economic average for interest rates in Australia is 7.5%? We're currently around about four and a half, man. If you're not factoring in interest rate rates up to around about eight, maybe even 9%, then your strategy is at risk. Okay, what about if rents drop? What about if you know things like you lose your job, your tenants move out, all that kind of stuff? There are strategies that you can put in place to protect yourself from all that stuff. However, how the hell do you know what they are? Have you been doing this for 20, 30 years? Have you been doing this for 3,000 odd clients? That's what we do, and that's the kind of thing that we provide for our clients. Finally, like I said, getting back to this client that happened last week, right? The biggest, one of the biggest things that I see people do is they go, they want to invest in, pro in property, they go and take on a whole bunch of debt, but then they don't go and get things like income protection or life insurance in place to protect the debt that they're taking on. Let me give you an example. So this client of ours, I won't mention him by name, but um, you know, implemented a property investment. We set, we a part of our process is making sure that our clients have the the relevant insurances in place to protect them. Three days after his policy became active, he was out. It's footy season. He was out playing footy, blew out his shoulder. Uh, he's like, it's made a mess of it, right? Basically, he's not going to be able to work for six months. Okay. Now that not only would have have put his investments at risk, but it also would have put his own personal mortgage, his own home at risk, because he would have failed to have the necessary protections in place. Okay, so talking that's income protection, you know, but at the same time, a lot of the time, you know, clients we have are couples, you know, wife, husband, that kind of stuff. People die, man, unfortunately, you know, very tragic situation. We have one of our clients um, tragically pass away 
uh, hit by a drunk driver. You know, once again, these clients had implemented a, an investment strategy chain reaction, but because they had that stuff in place, you know, despite obviously dealing with the tragedy that occurred, they, um, the, you know, the, at least she was protected, okay? The, the, their investment debt was paid out, their personal mortgage was paid out, and you know, that's something that she didn't have to worry about on top of everything else, okay? So life insurance, income protection, the best news is you can even get a lot of this stuff covered with your superannuation. You know that money that's sitting there you can't touch until you're 60 anyway? You can utilize that to protect you. Now, just to clarify, because I love being, you know, technically specific on these broadcasts, Got to be careful with income protection in, in superannuation though because typically those policies aren't very good and sometimes you can't even get income protection through your superannuation. However, it's something that's worthwhile looking at. So guys, like I said, that pretty much wraps up what I want to talk about with you guys today. The key is this, if you're going to be investing, you've got to think about it from all of those three perspectives. You've got to be thinking about what sort of capital growth, what's something that's going to consistently grow, what's something that is going to be as neutrally geared as possible. Typically, it will depend on different people. You know, some people can afford the negative gearing strategies. Some people need to have positive gearing strategies, but really a strategy is going to be designed for you. But really the best strategy is a strategy where you're going to get consistent growth. It's going to be neutrally geared and where you're taking on the least amount of risk possible. So guys, once again, I hope that's been of value to you. Guys, I'd love, you know, there's a lot of technical stuff I talked about today. If you've got questions, please post them on the video, right? We'd love to get back to you and let you know exactly, you know, the answers to those questions or how we can point in the right direction. Um, the other thing is, you know, I hope you got value out of this video today. If you got value, please do me the favor, okay? Please encourage me to keep doing this stuff, all right? By sharing it with your friends and family. We want people to have the access to this information as much as possible. And apart from that, guys, I really hope you guys have a great day and I look forward to speaking to you on the next broadcast. All right, have a great weekend. Thanks, guys. Bye.